afternoon to our honorable guest, Director General of National Arts Gallery, Yang Berbahagia, Professor Dr. Dr. Muhammad Najib bin Ahmad Dawa, Deputy Assistant Director of Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in Malaysia, Ms. Lin Jen Ching. Our guest speaker, Professor Chang Yi Tan. Our host, Dr. Ko Do Tat. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome all of you to Tea Philo 15 sharing session organized by Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in Malaysia, produced by Inso Arts and Culture Foundation here in Auditorium of National Arts Gallery. My name is Hannah Ahmad and I will be your Master of Ceremony for today's event. Some of you might be wondering, or some of you might be new, what is T-Philo? T-Philo is basically a, contra a contraction of T and philosophy. So this is one of the series of talks that encourage the sharing of knowledge about philosophy, humanities, art and culture. Today is the 15th sharing, and for the session of today, the title would be how to create museum experiences for yourself and will be presented by our professor Chang Yi Tan. <coughs> Moving forward, I would like to invite Yang Babahagia Professor Datuk Dr. Muhammad Najib bin Ahmad Dawa, Director of General of National Arts and Gallery, to present us a welcome speech. Please welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan selamat datang dan salam sejahtera. Uh, terima kasih uh, Cik Hana Ahmad. I think uh, the introduction given by Hana about the event today is quite brief. I think uh, we can understand the program today. And uh, you will back here, Ms. Lin Jenching, Deputy Assistant Director of Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in Malaysia. Professor Cheng Yuitan, the guest speaker, is a very interesting guy. When you look at the photograph, you look at the photograph, that is actually not like what you are going to see in Ahmed. Uh, I think he has slimmed down. I think he has slimmed down and uh, I think the wife has taken care of him uh, very well. So his other half is also with him today just to take care of it, to make sure that he presented the paper. <laughs> and then the members of the media, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to be here as a main host to the 15 T Pillow Salon Talk. Thank you all for being here. I wish you all a warm welcome. Not to forget, I would like to welcome our guest speaker to the National Art Gallery and to Malaysia, Professor Cheng Yuita. I'm sure that you will enjoy his address as much as he will enjoy speaking to you because he's a very nice guy. So <laughs> he will make jokes to you. And I think the title today given to him is about uh, museum experiences for yourself. I think uh, he's one of the experts in terms of this field, in terms of museum and about how to get the best experience visiting the gallery. So this 15T Pilo Salon talk is about how to create your own experience in art museum organized by Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in Malaysia and produced by Inso Arts and Culture Foundation. T Pilo is a platform of sharing where they share good practices in building cultural and social capital through salon talks with tea. So it goes along with tea. Many Taiwanese speakers have been invited to Malaysia to engage with the local culture communities by promoting mutual learning and consequently forming meaningful cultural exchange platform for participants from both countries. With this collaboration, through this program, we can educate people about our culture, art, and heritage. I hope we will engage many more art programs within Taiwan and Malaysia, not only in Malaysia, but to bring our arts to Taiwan. 
This time, we at the National Arts Gallery are glad to be part of the event. Together, we hope the effort to bring meaningful and educative content on the zoology from Taiwan to Malaysia and will not stop an exchange between the two countries will flourish. I believe this will further enhance the existing positive and progressive relationship between Malaysia and Taiwan. And at the same time, in celebrating 60th years of the National Art Gallery in Malaysia, we want to nurture art education and knowledge to all and bring to you many exciting exhibitions and activities. We have always aimed to promote and enhance the quality of, of our national art by organizing exhibitions, conferences, workshops, competitions, and art activities locally and abroad. Just to share with you, at the moment, we are showcasing a several art exhibition on the third floor. It's a very interesting exhibition brought to the country through the embassy. This is uh, Caravaggio artwork. This is the, an artwork within the period of the uh, 16th century. And the second floor, one floor for us, uh, an exhibition with the title A Place Called Home. It's a, it's a good exhibition, an exhibition that is based on our collection, our collection of 60th year. It's uh, beginning with the artwork in the period of 1800, painted by uh, expatriates from, uh, from UK, which they paint and sketch their experiences in the country. Until at least the latest is one of the artwork is set of a Jamal's work. So the artwork, we don't exhibit the artwork, but we animate the artwork. So we are giving a new life to the collection. So the collection is just not collection kept in our storage, but at the same time we are giving a new life to the artwork. So we animate the artwork. So the, the, the artwork will communicate with you. So this is a good experience. We have to walk through on the second floor. It's something different. And uh, people are so used to the artwork traditional, conventional artwork painting, which is still painting, but these particular artworks will interact. And you can see a bit, and then you will gain some, a different experience. It's about like GIF kind of uh, software that uh, we animate. Uh, I just hope that you all will have time and uh, walk up, or you can take the lift up on the second floor to have that experience. And uh, on the ground floor, we do have uh, artwork, uh, which is a collaboration with the uh, Association of uh, Architects of Malaysia. And at the same time, they showcase uh, called, uh, furniture competition as well. So it's all about contemporary kind of things and also that link with the conventional. And our collection will be across the room on the first floor. It's just uh, Minter Pratyan. Minter Pratyan in English, pay attention to our collections. So it's on the first floor. It's all about sculptures. So you can see beautiful artworks. And you can see the, the earlier chapter of the collections of the artwork. So I hope that the 15 editions of the Hero Salon Talk will be a huge success with all of your participation. And I hope you all can learn something, something new today. And this is an important program for the networking opportunity. Best wishes for the day's ahead. It's a tremendous program. And I know that you will draw energy, you will draw inspiration through the experience shared to us by Professor later on. I wish to welcome you once again to the National Gallery. And uh, thank you again for being with us. And uh, I apologize, the room is not packed today. Uh, normally it's packed, and uh, this is due to the traffic, heavy traffic, because they are still celebrating the 
the Eid Mubarak. It's actually a festival to the Muslim celebrating uh, after going through 30 days of fasting. So it's still going on. So they are still moving around and everybody is enjoying the food. And uh, I just hope that uh, you will request from the Taipei representative in Kuala Lumpur uh, not to take you to restaurant that serve uh, European food, that you go to the restaurant that serve local food. Because she's been enjoying the local food, uh, but not sharing it with you. So, uh, so I just hope that while you are around, and uh, she will take care of you. And just hope that you can get uh, a bite of uh, Because the nation they eat uh, very hot food. Even Kentucky practically got hot, so hot with chili. So I'm sharing with you the Malaysian food experience, and you are sharing with us your museum experience. <laughs> so uh, thank you again for being with us. Thank you very much, Professor Dato Dr. Muhammad Najib bin Ahmad Dawa, for a lovely welcoming speech. Now I know more about a National Art Gallery, so there's no excuse for me as a Malaysian not to go to the from the ground to the third floor. Thank you very much. Okay, going forward. So I would like to introduce you, okay, before the guest speaker, I would like to introduce you who is the host for today's session. So the, he is the founder of YYG Studio, practitioner of museum administration and arts marketing. I had a little bit talk of him with him earlier. He sounds really good. Dr. Ko Do Tai endeavors in advocating on aesthetic and museum works. He lectures classes in regards of aesthetic studies and art history nationwide. Uh, meanwhile, propelling the concept of museum administration art, marketing, and cultural strategies, and management. Without further ado, I would like to welcome the guest speaker and the host of Tea Fellow Sharing Session today. Please give a big hand to Dr. Ko Do Tad and Dr. Kwan Yu Han for the stage. Our guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to welcome you again to T4 Your Salon Talk today. Uh, to show that our professor is actually a funny and interesting guy, I will not make any joke today. <laughs> I promise that. Today's session is a very rare topic because in Malaysia it's very hard to hear someone talking about uh, art museum and how to visit art museum. Uh, so, uh, especially how to create an art museum experience for yourself. Our speaker, Dr. Chang Yu Tan, is a former director of National Museum of History in Taiwan, and he is actually also the president of Chinese Association of Museum, board member of International Committee for Museum Management and International Council of Museum, and also he is also a chair professor of Fohuang University. Uh, I think that everyone look at the information we publish on Facebook, so you already know that he has uh, publications including Observation of Trend of Museum, uh, Eco Museum, The Rise of Cultural Movement. So, we're going to talk about what is, museum, what is art museum and how do we define it and what does museum do and what kind of uh, experience can we gather in your visit in museum. And most importantly, uh, why we need to visit art museum, and how can we visit it? Is it a way or no way to, to go around? So I won't wasting any much time for the introductions. Let's welcome Professor Chang. Thank you. Thank you, Dola, and thank you for my dear director, Dola. We have just met several months, several minutes ago, but I found him a very creative and innovative director. I wish all the best for your birthday 
and uh, thank you for your brief introduction about your museum. After the speech, I might find some time to turn you around and learn something from you. I'm honored to receive this invitation from the National Art Gallery, Malaysia. I just mentioned to Dado that for me to speak English in front of a large group is just like a dog trying to walk on its hind legs. So sometimes, please forgive me if I have to slow down my speaking pace in order to make you understand me. I want to thank Director Zhou Peiji and Mr. Lin Zhen, Lin Zhen Qing and Mr. Wu Mei Bao of the Taipei Economic and the Cultural Office in Malaysia. And I want to also thank besides the uh, General Manager Chen Chan Jin and uh, Lin Yan Qi and uh, Lu Xiang Lu Xiang Bing of the Inso Arts and Culture Foundation for your coordination to make this speech possible. Especially, I want to thank all of you who come here and listen to my talk. Sorry to keep waiting for several minutes. Before we begin today's subject, please allow me a few minutes to introduce myself. Just as Dado said, this picture was took three years ago, so it's quite, quite different from what I'm looking at. But I'm the real one, I'm not the fake. <laughs> Dado, you can go back to your office. <laughs> Rest. Okay? <laughs> My talk will be how to create music experience for yourself. And uh, you can see I prepare a lot, but I think I have only limited time. So I will start the first, the second, the third, and the fourth, and five, uh, fifth part. If we have time, we may go to the number six, seven, eight, and nine. But I think we can only have limit time for the first and the fifth part. The first part will mention something about my music experience. The second part, I will mention, I will give you some very brief introduction of music in Taiwan. And uh, the third part will be the main topic of this speech. How our music audience looks like. And the fourth one is how to create your own art museum experience. And the fifth one and will be the last one. I will give you five tips for a truly rewarding visit in art museums. And this is the museum I served in 1980 to 1983. It was a pure accident that I stumbled into the world of music in the 1980s. At that time, after graduation from the Department of Zoology, National Taiwan University, I went to the United States to pursue further study of ichthyology. For you, you not familiar with this word, it's study of fish. After receiving the master's science degree, I returned to Taiwan and applied a job in the National Taiwan Museum in Taipei. That's, that's the museum there. I was in charge 
of the identification and the maintenance of fish specimen there. As the only one fish expert in that museum, I was essentially the caretaker of all the fish specimen there. In the three years of working in the National Taiwan Museum, I often covered for my managed colleagues and took their night shift in the museum. Hence, for almost three years, I lived a life just like Larry, the protagonist of the movie Night at the Museum. <laughs> I see someone laughing. Did you see the movie? Yes. Funny one. Night at the Museum is a trilogy of fantasy comedy film beginning in 206 and ending in 2014. They were box office successes, grossing over six, 600 million. And that's three posts of them. This is the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, where the film was shot. And that's the night at the American Museum of Natural History, New York, appeared in the film. As some of you might know, in the, in the film, the leading actor, Larry, was a divorced father who applied for a job as a night watchman at New York City's American Museum of Natural History. Larry thought the night watchman job would be an easy one, having only to make sure nothing goes wrong at night. He never foresaw that specimen like dinosaur <laughs> Like dinosaur, monkeys, Attila the Hun, Indian princess, and uh, President Roosevelt of the United States of America. They all came back alive and chasing him and played tricks with him all night and only returned to their cabinet at dawn. This is Larry with the prey for Tyrannosaurus. Mischievous capuchin monkey. The violent Attila the Hun. Indian princess Sakajabi, an Indian princess who is known for help for the Lewis and Clark expedition in achieving their chartered mission by exploring the Louisiana territory, which is well known in American public imagination. And you might be familiar with this film star, Robin Williams, a Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th President of the United States of America. Such things, alas, did not happen to me. However, during the long nights of those three years in the National Taiwan Museum, being alone 
in the spacious and the echoing museum building. I could not but reflect on the meanings and values of museum as an institution. This brought a tremendous change in my life, pushing me to change gear from a biologist to a museum curator. Thus began my four decades of museum work. I am fortunate to choose the museum work when I was young. Having devoted all my life, I deeply love this work and never feel regret. Now let me go on to the second part of my talk. I have described some of the current situation of museum in Taiwan. According to the data from the Chinese Association of Museums, there are about 400 museums in Taiwan at present time. Among these various kinds of museums, 20 are national museums. 280 are local museums, and about 100 are private museums. And this is the museum which I served as director for seven years. It is very near to the Taipei Botanical Garden. In Taiwan, we have a, a variety of museums. There are museums that attract about 4 million visitors annually, such as the National Paris Museum, where Dado has been, and uh, the National Museum, and the National Museum on Natural Science, which I have been working there for 10 years. This museum opened in 1986 and introduced to audience many of the most advanced exhibition and educational programs at that time. It paid special attention to the interaction with audience and established a new paradigm for the museum sector in Taiwan in 1960s. I'm so lucky to have been working in this museum for 12 years. In terms of art museums, we see successful ones in various geographic regions, such as the Taipei Fine Art Museum in Taipei, the National Taiwan Museum of Fine Art in Taizong, the new Qimei Museum in Tainan, and the Kaohsiung Museum of Fine Art in Kaohsiung. That's the Taipei Fine Art Museum, which was established Taipei Fine Art Museum was established in 1983 and the National Taiwan Museum of Fine Art in Taichung was established in 1988. This one called the Kaohsiung City Museum was established in 1994 and the new Chime Museum was established in 2015. It's a beautiful museum and attracts about 300 million every year.
currently a trend of building new art museums in Taiwan, especially in urban region of Taiwan. The new Taipei city, Taoyuan city, Taichung city, and Tainan city, they are all planning on building new art museums. And the scale of this newly built art museum will far exceed that of the current city art museum. Now I will show you some image of art museum audience as depicted in New York New Yorker magazine. Just in case you might be bored by my speech. There's two museum guards. They are talking with each other. He said, it must be pouring outside. Besides learning and enjoying art, people went to museums for a variety of reasons. Taking shelter from the rain, being in an air-conditioned room, dating, family gathering, or just social. So we do not expect people they just come to museum to, to study. They come to museum for a variety of motivations. <laughs> yes. After touring around art museum for two hours, all they could remember was the fire extinguisher. said to the husband, said, here is one you understand. Her husband is definitely a God prayer. Can someone design a museum? That does not have to be explained. To many people, art museum is a formidable place, full of frustrations. This is the last one. I hear sentence you to the Mermaid Show on a Saturday afternoon. It is better to punish him for labor than to ask him to go to the art museums. <laughs> am, I, am I doing well in English? <laughs> Me and my wife went to London about four years ago 
and we came across this book called How to Visit an Art Museum. This book was published in 2014. It is a short, fun, and rewarding read, full of tips and inspiring illustrations to get the most out of your art museum visit. And this is the Chinese edition, translated by me and my wife, published by Five Senses in 2015. I bring the book here for whom asked the first question. <laughs> <laughs> and here are some of the highlights of this book. He said, a symphony take 40 minutes, a film, one and a half hour or two hours at most. But art museum lets you decide how much time to spend with an artwork. This is a very famous exhibit in Tate Modern. The moment we stand eye to eye with an artwork, as visitors, we always expect something to happen. Standing in front of an artwork and observing it does not necessarily equal making sense of it. <coughs> That's why we should look at it slowly. If you detest a painting at first sight, that's fine, but keep looking. Past the initial shock, you will often find a worthwhile thought for message, one that may need some controversy to be told effectively. That's why artists exist. They have to toast things anew. And there is always someone who will ask eternal question, but is this art? <laughs> In the museum, feeling uncomfortable is often a good sign. Which means you are at the edge of your comfort zone and something new is going to happen. Masterpieces or not, what ultimate comes is this book. Is that this book enable to grab your attention? He said kids are expert at posing questions and the seeing things different. The author said they are both crucial skills for art critics. It may come as a surprise, but the best museum guy in the world lives at your house. It is in fact your own kiss. So the author suggests that museums should consider providing a rent a kit service outside the museum to help visitors understand museum's artworks. Picasso said, it took me four years to paint like Raphael, but a lifetime to paint like a child. He also said that every child is an artist. The problem is to remain an artist once they grow up. <coughs> so the other suggest that we consider the museum a menu, not a checklist. 
devote time to truly getting to know a few works. Like French novelist Marcel Proust said, the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new lands, but in having new eyes. As conclusion, I will give you five tips for a truly rewarding visit. Tip one, there is no right or wrong way to visit a museum. The most important rule you should keep in mind is to follow your own instinct. Just like Oprah said, follow your instinct. That's where true wisdom manifests itself. The second one is, be prepared what excites you to enjoy what delights you, your heart and mind. You have a feast in front of you. You should make most of it. <coughs> Stay as long as short as you will, but do your best at all times to let the work of art speak directly to you with minimum of interference or distinction. Like Arthur Schopenhauer said, treat a work of art like a prince. Let it speak to you first, not the guide, not the expert, not the textbook, but artwork itself. Remember that don't hush the museum. The museum are there for you all the time. They will give you something only kings and queens had in days go by. They will provide an opportunity to be with the greatest masterpieces of all time. So grab the opportunity and enjoy yourself. The last one said, if you know how to make the most of your museum going adventures, you can even take some memory of your favorite work home with you. And in the future, they might change your life. Just like Steve Jobs said, if you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. As with all matters of heart, you will know when you find it. Thank you very much. I think I will just stop here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Chong. Uh, is it... Anyone have any questions for today's talk? Uh, it's actually, I, I don't know if I can get a point from the speech just now, but I do write down something is very interesting. Like, uh, if we want to visit an art museum, it's actually very hard for us. Because like the tips say, follow your instinct. Usually, we went to museum, we are using our logic. So that's why that you can't feel what the artwork is trying to speak with you. Uh, Sometimes when I bring my students to art museum, also have that kind of experience. Like uh, we actually spend very less time for the artwork. I can't recall which paper I read it before. They have a thesis writing about a person usually stand on the artwork only takes around 20 to 25 seconds. So then you can go to a hundred or two hundred artwork for your visit in, in the art museum. But we didn't put a lot of time on it. Uh, in my experience, uh, like we went to Amsterdam Bricks Museum, for only one artwork will take around 20 to 30 minutes to talk about it. So if you go in for your logic counting that how much money do you spend on your air tickets or everything or else, you will actually feel bored. Sorry, uh, Professor Chang, when you sit down, probably then you can uh, ask part of the Q&A sections. Okay. 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 Okay.
So another thing is that uh, let the artwork of, uh, speak to you. But just like just now I said, you need time to let the artwork speak to you. And one of your life's time piece uh, be a king or queen to go to the art museum in front to uh, feel that. So this is the viewpoint I write it down. But uh, do the, anyone have any questions to talk about it? Because, oh yeah. So you can book. Yes. <laughs> so you have the book. <laughs> Oh, hi. Um, just want to ask, your, based on your 40 years experience in museum, how will you refine museum after the 40 years? Before that, before what we know as a museum, but based on your 40 years in a museum, how will you refine a museum in your life? You mean, you mean the definition? Of yes, museum? after your 40 years in museum. It is very difficult to define museum because museum has been in this world for about 2,000 years. There are a variety of museums, so it is very difficult to define museum as an institution. But according to my 14 years experience, I would say that museums are not for the object. Museums are for people. Museum is not just a place to store artifacts or specimens. Museums are placed to try to inspire the visitor, try to let them have feelings. So it's not a rational place, but a, a, a place full of emotion. emotion. That's, that's my definition. A, a good museum should be able to encourage people to study. They should put more emphasis on how to inspire audience, not on how to conserve or study the specimen or artifact. We have to divide our resources clearly, intelligently. So if I am museum director, I will, I will allocate more resources in education, exhibition, not on conservation or research. But though that might not agree with me, but, you know, <laughs> that, that, that's my that's my point of view. Yes. Did that ask? Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yes. Could I have the mic? Okay. Uh, Professor Zhang, uh, and Mr. Ko. I enjoy listening to your presentation. A very enlivened presentation. Thank you. Talking about the art museum in particular, I think it's a place for interaction between the viewer and artwork. I think we all we take that as a kind of a core function of an art museum. But talking about the general public, I think uh, in particular in Malaysia, I think the museum owners or the museum uh, management, as well as even the galleries, are having very difficult how to attract the general public to view artwork in the art museum. Once they enter the door of the museum, there should be no problem. They can stay longer or shorter as much as they can. But I think the challenge is how to attract them to enter into the museum. So I would like to appreciate if Professor Yang can uh, highlight maybe a few strategies how to attract the general public, increase the interest for museum goal. Thank you. That's all the director should consider about how to attract general visitor. I think that's not only the responsibility of the museum itself. It's also the responsibility of a school, of family, of parents. Because when you bring your child to the museum, very often they will, they will go to the museum later and as a life habit. So, School should, should notice the student what museum can provide. 
and the museum should arrange some teachers workshop to let teacher know the content of the museum and that will encourage the teacher to go to visit the museum and bring her or his student to the museum and that will encourage the, the student to, to, to go to the museum and uh, open their perspective. So I think not uh, only the responsibility of the museum itself. School, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Culture, or Minister of uh, Touring, Tourist, they all have the responsibility to recognize the resources of the museum can provide and try to work out together uh, to, to let the general public know the, the benefit of the museum. You want to uh, yeah, I think something is uh, probably the problem of Malaysia is actually each of our departments separate to do their job, not combine together and think that how to make the museum work better. Uh, and Dr. Chang probably can share about you know, what do you do in Taiwan at the time in, in your, your uh, working that how do you inspire people to go to the museum? Can you share some idea for us? Okay. There's a, uh, there's a lot of way to, to, to work with different departments of the government and uh, also you can use a lot of uh, educational program for teachers we provide a teacher's camp during summer or winter vacation and let them stay in the museum for two or three days to familiar with the museum not just, just pop in they, they have to stay longer in the museum to know what they can use the resources so we, we, we arrange a lot of this kind of workshop for teachers try to familiar them with the museum resources and then they can bring students to the museum and after museum visit they can discuss at the class what they have learned not just, not just go to the museum and see something and go back and nothing happened we want to have a continuous effect on, on teachers or students and also we established four graduate institutes of museology in Taiwan. We provide uh, master courses for them. So they can have basic information about how to use museum's resources. And when they graduate, they can, they can work in the museum. So the, the literacy of museum and uh, the professional of museum will be will be affected by the school system if we provide more master or <coughs> PhD degree to to deepen the, the profession of, of, of museum. So people will like to, to to learn more about museum and to work in the museum and uh, the museum will also benefit from the professionalism. I would like to prompt whether you agree that the statement a museum should project as a social reality or a social space to provoke certain social issues or open up the debate on what's going on in the society. And if, you, if yes, then would you quote some example that you have been realized over your 40 years experience on certain issues that reflect the reality of what happened in Taiwanese society? I think it is a very important trend to museum to, to demonstrate their social values. They are not just institution to, to keep all the artifacts and nothing to do with what's going on in the society. That's my, my belief. So all museums, not just national museum or local museum, they should concentrate on what happened around their community or around society and try to put some new program in exhibits or educational program try to respond to that social fact in in my own experience i i, I will record later but 
there are a lot of museums in Taiwan. They they concern about social issues. For example, we have a the new immigrants. Yeah, the new immigrant museum in Taoyuan. We have a, we have a lot of immigrants from Southeast Asia in Taoyuan, and the people are not very familiar with these newcomers. So we want to establish a museum called the Museum of Immigration in Taoyuan. Try to deal with this this issue, and try to tell the community in Taoyuan that we are all immigrants. We should treat each other well, not just like others, but our. We are the same kind of person. We should treat each other equally. That that's a lot of this kind of of new museum were built in Taiwan. Try to cover the social issue, and also in my in my own museum, we do something about the new immigration people in Taiwan. We have some special published brochure for for people from Philippines, from Malaysia, from in Indonesia. We publish some brochures in their language. And distribute to their community, so they will have access to the national museum. Not just walking through because we do not have their language guide, so we provide museum guide in their language, so they can use the museum more conveniently. I don't know <coughs> that answer your question or not. Thank you for taking so much time to explain that. Uh, Hi, I'm Professor John Patrol here from UITM Shalom. I'm Patrol from UITM, somewhere about 40 kilometers from here. <laughs> okay, um, your um, experience yeah, in museum sector for 40 years is remarkably uh, excellent. So, uh, if we were to compare what we, what is happening in Malaysia, um, more or less probably uh, it goes back on the funding budgeting of museum sectors. So looking at the issues raised by our friend here on public programs, I am interested of knowing on how Taiwan museums probably manage uh, budgets for public programs, maybe, because we have problems here. I mean, not really problems, but we have those others. Uh, those public, uh, I mean, we, we um, I just want to know how you guys uh, allocate funds for public programs that includes museum learning for school programs and what my second question would be how in your 40 years of, of experience on handling museums in Taiwan what would be the what is what is the what are the most challenging uh, uh, challenge or factors that really uh, stopping you from doing uh, engaging with publics and so on what would be the most challenging factors that really stop people from coming to your museum in your 40 years experience? And how do you overcome those problems? So you are mentioning about the budget for yeah. public education? Yeah. Yeah. You know, every, every government, they have a, a def, definite budget for, for the museum every year. So you have to use this wisely. If you want to use a lot of school programs, you might reduce resources for use in the collection or research. So you have to establish your public education policy first and try to, to distribute it, your budget wisely. And that, that, that will have to be discussed inside the museum and try to ask the different division step, try to talk together and make negotiation so we can distribute some of the budget into the education division. So people will complain, but as a director, you should, after discussion, decide what kind of budget you should put in the public education. And we almost about 
40% of our museum's budget was, was used in exhibition or education. Uh, that, that, that's a lot. And we also cooperate with, with some social enterprise, ask them to provide money, for example, for people who live very far away from the city. We ask the, the students there to come to the museum and provide transportation fee and lunch for them. But we ask the corporation to pay the money and uh, we put their image on our brochures, on our program. So they, they think it is of mutual interest. So they will pay the money for, for them to come. And we are in a very different Age. We have uh, we have a lot of new technology developed in this area. Especially after twenty one century, we have mobile phone, we have uh, QR code, we have uh, virtual reality, we have augmented reality. This all new technology should be used in museum and art the audience to, to have more accessible environment in the museum. So, for example, in my museum, we use QR code all the time. So we reduce the content of the, the exhi exhibition integration on site. So people just use their, their, their phone and they can get the information when they want to go back and see it clearly. So that will reduce a lot of uh, space for the interpretation of exhibits. And also the augmented reality. You use different technology and uh, people, when they go to the museum, they use this technology, they can interact with the ex exhibit. So they get more information from, from their visit. And we also have some, like an electric pen, try to give to the audience. And when they come across some interactive exhibits, they can use the electric pen to interact with the exhibits and store the information there so they can use it after the visit. So a lot of, a lot of opportunity when we live in this kind of new technology, it's very useful for museum to adapt. I think we have a, a lot of opportunity for the museum, museum visitor to use. They don't even have to go to the museum on site. They can enjoy the benefit of museum by this kind of technology. And we should take notice of this kind of new technology in the museum and for, for example, in our museum we attract about one million visitors on site into the National Museum of History. But we have about 200, uh, 2 million of online users. They don't even come to the museum, but they, they know the content of the museum online. So we should have new job like online manager in the museum to handle two million people who did not even come to the museum outside. And that's very important. And if you don't have this kind of new job, when online user they try to contact museum once, twice, and museum have no response, they will withdraw and you lost this kind of visitor. So we have to, to change the infrastructure of the museum. Try to create some new job, like a digital collection manager, online manager, or how to create interactive environment for interaction digitally. That all new job, a director should think about that. And they try to recruit from different discipline, new museum staff in their museum. So the museum, museum's face will be changed totally. 
I think within 10 or 20 years, we will not have traditional curator, educator. We will have very different museum staff in the near future. That's what we should think about. With museum visiting journey, like throughout uh, many years, which one is the most um, memorable and unforgettable experience? Yes, I, as I mentioned in, in my museum experience, I am I'm a biologist, biologist by training, a, a, a scientist by training. So, me and my wife, we like to go to San Francisco to a museum called Exportorium. That's a very interactive science museum. Not just like traditional museum. Traditional museum, you stand in front of a steel painting. But in a science museum, they have a lot of interaction, interactive experience they create. So you can, you can feel it, you can touch it, you can you can do a lot of things in science museum which you cannot do in art museum. So, to myself, I like to go to the science museum to see what they create by the interactive exhibits or educational program and try to think, is that useful in an art museum? So I would, I would recommend or suggest when you go to San Francisco, go to the pile 15, number 15, and there's a museum called Expertorium. They do not even use the name museum. They use Expertorium means they think the museum is old. They want to use some new name and try to create, create a new museum atmosphere for the general public. I will recommend that museum for you. Okay, I think I'll open one last question. And then we'll go to move here. So my question here is that uh, I ever visited Capodimonte uh, Monte Museum in Annapolis, Italy. So the museum opened up the collection of the artifacts and objects to 10 high profile personnel in Annapolis itself to curate a co-curate an exhibition. And I thought this uh, idea idea is very brilliant because we we perceive that museum is a public space. So why the collection itself should be private on a private run or private curate and not open up for the public to co-curate together. So I ask his opinion and experience of this. I think that's a very, very important question. I will answer it from two sides. The first side is the museum's collection, we should make it available for independent curators they can use different kinds of museums collection and cre create new exhibits. And that already happened in a lot of European countries. Uh, and we even have books called Independent Curator. That means they are not curated within any particular museum. They can go to a lot of different museums and try to, to select different items from different museums and cre create a new exhibit. I think that's very, very beneficial for the museum themselves because you have only your curator and your very limited collection. So what you can create is very limited topic. If we open our collection to different the private, private curator, then we can make good use of that. I think that's very important. And uh, the only thing is to change your mindset of, of museum director or museum curator. We should open our mind and let people to have access to our collection and use it uh, to, to, ben to mutually benefit to the independent curator or the museum as well. That's, that's the first time I, I mentioned. The second thing is only very important because I just mentioned we have new technology and the cost or, or the quality of the digitalization at the 21st century is very, very far beyond the, the old one. So it is very, I think, the, we are not very cheap, but the, the expense is 
reasonable for people to digitalize all their collection. So we should change the, the idea that collection is belong to some particular museum. Collection is belong to public. Because museums are built by public, by, by government, by taxpayer. So we should, we should change our idea that collection is not our museum's collection. That collection belongs to all the public. We should make good use. We should make people have more access to this collection. Not just for exhibition. You can have some culture production. You can have create some, some merchandise by the museum's collection. We should open to all business, education, different fields to use our museum's collection. And uh, it is, the time is now, because digitally we are affordable to this kind of <coughs> collection. So you see a lot of uh, museums like the Metropolitan Museum in New York, they open about, I think, 200,000 of their collection open to the public. And the British Museum and the National Palace Museum in Taipei, they all open a lot of their digital collection open to the public for them to use. So I think not just business, education, from, diff from every point of view, we should make our collection accessible to the public. And we are just trustees of the public. We cannot claim that we have the proper right of our collection that belongs to the public. I think that's very important. And the, the technology will help us to do this kind of thing. Okay. Uh, well, once again, I would like to thank you, Dr. Chang, for the uh, speech today. I'll take our time. Give a big applause to Dr. Chang and Dr. Please have a seat first, no worries. Um, I believe, I hope uh, everyone enjoyed today's session. Um, I believe each of us learned invaluable knowledge um, from today's topic, which is how to create museum experience for yourself. Um, as someone from the background who don't have any idea about museum, I always have the skeptical idea of what is museum is? I mean, related to history, related to... It could be a boring stuff to some people, but after I came here today, I realized that going to a museum is not just about um, history. It's just like to open up yourself to a sense of appreciation. I had a talk, a quick talk with uh, Ms. Evan Kuei earlier. She mentioned in Taipei, the people over there, it's like, combining the history and moving on to the future. So they still have a sense of appreciation towards the past. They really appreciate about the past because the past makes the present. And from there, they will be able to move on and become better, I mean, generation, technology-wise and everything. And today is, is a really, really lovely um, talk. And uh, just to give a brief information and reminder to our audience today, so the next uh, tea fellow student talk session will be, uh, which is uh, tomorrow, be done by Ms. Uh, Evan Kuei. She was going to share her experience as a museum consultant in um, art and museum management itself. And she said to me that there will be a lot more she's going to talk about. But um, this talk is going to be conducted in Mandarin. Okay, regardless if you. Uh, it doesn't have to be Chinese can attend if you are able to understand Mandarin. Welcome for tomorrow's talk, no problem. And just to let some of you guys know that given that this uh, tea pillow talk is a cumulative uh, attendance uh, kind of talk, so therefore you need to make sure that you sign the attendance okay, before you leave. And uh, there will be, because as you constantly uh, join us, Okay, for the tea talk, you will be receiving special gift at the last session itself. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, please have a seat, <coughs> Professor and also Dr. Kovinda, for having a big applause.